Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that my channel's been going for two and a bit years. It's in in February or end of February. It'll be the start of my well, one and a bit years actually. At the, the, the end of February, it'll be the start of my third year on YouTube. And because of my chronic pain and my fibro, my memory's not that good. Not anymore, anyway. So I knew from the start I was going to have to have a way of logging which palettes I'd already used, which ones I still needed to use, particularly because if someone came back to me in six months time and said, oh, what was the blush you used in that particular film? And I'd be like, hmm. So I knew there was going to have to be a way that I needed to log all of these things. And I watched um, some films on bullet journaling and I thought, oh, I could do my own kind of bullet journal where I log everything about my channel. Twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, twenty twenty work in progress. So, what I, uh, I look like I'm naked now, don't I? I have actually got a top on. I promise. Let me go look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pictures up on screen as I talk you through um, basically how I keep track of my channel and keep track of when collabs are due, etc, etc. So if you think you're going to find that interesting, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and I'll try not to waffle too much. Now the format of these, obviously I've tweaked them each year, I've made adjustments and amendments and I think I've now got it to the stage that um, I've got it pretty much crack on now. This is still, I'm still filling in this one, I'm still filling in all of the um, details of um, products that I own. <laughs> these, these stickers on the front of here are the ones that I didn't stick on my bottle of shampoo and conditioner when I did my function of beauty ones but basically let's take you to some blank pages initially these are just dotted pages don't know if that, there we go let me just spin this that way ever so slightly just so I've got more room to put a picture up there but basically 4F Beauty 2020, this is where I log how I go through the year, I also list PR codes down here, set myself a target of 800 by the end of this year and then I have all of my week by week listed out. As I said, I'm going to put pictures up on screen. So I've got all the weeks. I've got basically got 54 weeks here because I've got the last week of 2019 and the first week of 2021 as well as the 52 weeks in 2020. And then I have my list of my photo inspiration challenge so I can keep track of who I've collabed with, how many times I've collabed with them, what number I'm up to, so for example this look was actually filmed, this was um, episode 39 with Anya and it was the third time that I'd collabed just with Anya on her own. I've also got a list of retro reviews which is what I call my shop my stash uh, so I can see which palettes I've actually 
um, reviewed and which ones I haven't. I've then got a page where if I've got other groups like uh, Three Continents, One Palette, I've got a list of those, how many times we've collabed, uh, the AAK group, the AAA group and the One Row in a Palette. Those are the other four kind of series that I have on my channel at the moment. Then I get into the product logs which are broken down into foundation high-end, foundation drugstore, concealer, setting powder, bronzer, blush, and then all the eyeshadows. What I try and do at the beginning of the year, the companies that I know I'm definitely going to be using at least one of their um, eyeshadow palettes through the year. So, Jeffree Star, I'm a Glitter OMG, Kaleidos, Blush Tribe, September Rose, Certify, ABH, uh, Crow and Pebble, Ace Beauty, etc. etc. I will list those all together so that I've got all the Jeffrey ones together, all of the OMG ones together, etc. Obviously, if I then buy more through the year, I'll have to add them on further through but I like to start the year with the groups of the ones that I know that I'm going to use most the ones that are in the top sort of two or three drawers of my organizer so I've got lots and lots of pages for eyeshadow because that is my weakness and then I've got a page listing out just the Jeffree Star highlights and then a couple of pages for other highlights and again I do the same there if I've got specific ones, like I've got 3O for Nikki tutorial highlights. So I've got all those linked together. I've got a couple of Fenty ones, I've got those linked. I've got a couple of Becca, three Becca ones, I've got those linked together, etc. Uh, then I've got mascara. And then Jeffree Star lipsticks I list out separately because obviously that's the ones I've got the most of. Then I list out... Um, the other lipsticks that I have and then I get into my video log and then at the end I've got blank pages so that if I need to increase the video log I can or if I have a new series that I need to log I've got blank pages or if I fill up the eyeshadow palettes one for example which I really hope I won't, I hope I've left myself enough pages I can then continue on. So I've got photos on my phone that I will put up on the screen and talk you through each one. Let me just grab this. This is the annoying thing with the iPhone. You open up a particular picture and then if your screen lock comes on, when you come back into it, it just throws you right back to the start. So you've got to scroll all the way back up to where you were. Deep joy. First world problems. Right. First picture I'm going to put up is the YouTube subs where I keep a list of those. So you can see I've just got those listed out with every Monday's date and I list what my subs were every Monday. I've got my list of PR codes, I need to add VE Cosmetics to that because that was done because I, obviously I write these. I, I, oh, I need to wiggle, hang on. I'll probably have cut that out. Um, I start writing these up sort of November-ish of the preceding year. So obviously if I get any additional um, discount codes I have to add them on later. So down there out the way. So that's how I list how I keep a track of my numbers. Because I know people say, oh, you shouldn't be looking at your numbers, blah, blah, blah. If my numbers start drastically falling, then I need to know why. I need to have a look at what sort of films I've been putting up and what it is that people are not liking. Um, likewise, I want to know when I hit my target. Obviously, I would love to get to the stage that I'm monetized so that I can earn money from this and plough it back into buying more makeup. 
because obviously if I have more spare any, any money that I do make when if I ever get monetized will be used for either upgrading equipment or buying more stuff to review um, and that just helps me keep a log of how I'm doing then there's my weekly tracker or planner you can see I've got UL that's the total number of uploads that week and then TTLUL is total uploads for that year and then obviously the month and which week it is and then I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then the bottom box is where I list what my subs were on the Monday what my subs were on the Sunday night or only Monday morning and then the little box in the bottom right hand corner I list whether I've gone up or gone down and like I said, I've got one of those for every single um, week of the year. You can see above Thursday, I've got PH39 and year 3. Because that is photo 39, third time with Anya, and it's reminding me that that collab is due that day. Um, I believe I've got a picture I can put up for you from my 2018 which shows you how a completed double page spread would look this happens to be July now this is before I was logging or keeping a log of how many films I'd uploaded each week that's what I was saying to you how I've I've tweaked it each year until I've got what works for me um, but I was starting to keep a note you can see the asterisks indicate a film's gone up on that day and then I've just put an asterisk at the top and four but I wasn't keeping running totals but you can see I keep a list on what I do each day so um, so Tuesday the third was make film number 33 live on YouTube promo it on Instagram Twitter and Facebook and then edit film 84 and export so it just keeps me on track of what I've done, when I did it, um, you know, if, if I've got collabs up that day, etc, etc. And it just helps me keep track of, of what I've done. And in some ways it helps me track my pain levels as well, because if I see two or three days where I've done nothing, that usually means pain was so high I physically couldn't do anything. I couldn't even sit at the computer and do any editing. Um, so it's it's a way of me, it keeps me motivated because I think, oh, I've got two empty boxes this week, I must try harder next week, you know. Uh, but it also helps me log my pain, it helps me keep track of when collabs are due. Um, and for me this this works there's the list for my photo inspiration challenge you can see at the top I've got little matchstick markers where you cross through when you get to the fifth one so you can see who I've collabed with and how many times I've collabed with them Linda is currently in the lead with six films awesome Lagging behind at the bottom at the moment are Terra Kruger, Laura and Stacey who are all on one. So we must rectify that folks this year. And then you can see I've got listed episode number 39 with Anya. Quantity is the third time I've collabed with her. The column that says film, once I update my film log I will make an annotation in there as to which film it was. So if I need to pull footage back from a film for whatever reason, I know which film to look for on my hard drive. Then I got my retro review where you can see there I, I did log the film for Saharan 2, completely forgot to log the film for Prism. But I think what it was, I added the the film column after I'd done Prism. 
I think that's one of the improvements that I made so that I could track it. Um, so you can see I've done ABH's Prism and Juvia's Place Saharan 2 so far. If you have a request for a um, a palette that you would like to see me do a retro review of, drop a comment in the description in the comments box for me. Description box, that's where I write. Drop a, um, a note for me in the comments and if I have it I will absolutely add it to the list for you and make sure I do a retro review on it very soon. I am planning on doing a my current collection video soon but I need Hubby's help with that for lifting boxes of pallets around and stuff. My back won't let me do that on my own unfortunately. Then I've got this page where I've just got eight separate, so it's the same kind of layout as the weekly page, but on this one I'm tracking other series that I have on my channel, so Three Continents, One Palette, I've done three of those so far, AAK, we've got three of those, Triple A, we've got one, we need to get together again girlies, uh, and One Row, One Palette, so far I've done two and they're both with Jess, or Jessica. Then there's the product lock, and you can see I've got the um, foundation high end there. The first one I've got listed was the Zoeva Authentic Skin in shade 030 in Ambition. Once I've filmed with it, I will put a tick next to it. This is my way of checking back at the end of the year which ones did I film with, which ones did I not film with, and it just helps me when I'm doing a declutter as to um, which ones I'm finding that I'm gravitating more towards. And then Foundation Drugstore, the first one I've got listed on there was Rimmel Lasting Matte in 001 Fair Porcelain and you can see I've filmed with that this year so it's got a tick next to it. And then Concealer again, Rimmel Lasting Matte and the shade and I filmed with that one. Setting powder, I've listed the four setting powders that I use most in a year. The one that I use, I would say 99% of the time, is Coty Airspun Translucent Extra Coverage, which is why it's at the top of the list. Um, Hourglass Dim Light I will use very often because I like the blurring effect it gives. Jeffree Star Fair I've got and the Wet n Wild <laughs> claims it's a bronzer. You would have to be paper white for it to work as a bronzer because Reserve Your Cabana is this shade. But this is actually a very good drugstore dupe for the Hourglass uh, Ambient Lighting in Dim Light because prior to picking up an hourglass I was actually using the Wet n Wild to blur my pores instead. Bronzer, the two bronzers that I use most are my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and my latest uh, acquisition, the Hourglass Luminous Bronze which I happen to be wearing today. And then blush, I'm determined I'm going to pan this bloody blush this year. This is Tarte Exposed. Now I've had this probably three years now. Yes it's out of date. Do I care? No. I sanitise it at the beginning of each year. It's only been myself that's been used it, using it so it doesn't really bother me. It is now very difficult to pick pigment up on a brush so what I end up having to do is using a clean spoolie and just roughing the surface up so I've got loose pigments. So I've effectively got a loose blush. But I'm absolutely determined I'm going to bloody pan this. This is in shade Exposed, which is the absolute perfect shade for me. It really is the perfect nude. But you can see, I've had it three years and I've barely even... 
I haven't even hit pan yet, so I'm determined I'm going to pan that this year. That's why it's up at the top of the list. Um, and then the Hourglass Ghost Blush Quad. Uh, then I start listing the shadows. This is what I was saying about keeping the shadows together. So I've got all my Jeffree Star ones listed together in the order they were released. Um, then I've got my oh my glitter ones all together, not in the order they were released. Just I think the order I bought them in, to be quite honest. Um, then my Kaleidos ones, and then my blush tribe, and then my September rose, etc., etc. But you can see basically you list the brand. The shade or the name and then I tick when I film with it and you can see that every single item has an individual number and yes I hand wrote all those bloody numbers which is why it was done in a lot of different um, <clears throat> installments then I've got my Jeffrey highlights the ones that I use most are listed at the top um, and then the ones that I use least often are at the bottom. Dark Horse was a freebie from Beauty Bay when I ordered something else. Way too dark for me. Um, but at the moment I haven't got a friend with deeper, deep enough melanin uh, to pass it on to. Onyx Ice is... it was originally meant to be limited edition. This is what bugs me about people screaming about Peppermint Frost going, oh no, no, no you can't do that, it was limited edition. Onyx Ice was originally limited edition and I bought it and then he made it permanent, literally within like weeks. Um, I know a black highlighter is not your traditional highlighter, but if I'm doing Halloween looks, for example, um, it's a great sort of grey, grungy, contoury shade to use. I used it um, in the Halloween Broken Doll look that I did. Um, I used the Onyx Ice for that, but Mint Condition and Deep Freeze, I bought both of those on a whim. They're blue and they're green for goodness sake. Probably should declutter them, but who's going to want a blue or a green? Unless I know a leprechaun or a smurf that uh, specifically looking for a highlight. And then, as I was saying, I've got listed out some of my other highlights. Um, the ones I use most, and the one at the bottom there, the Hojo, Hojo Brilliance, was a new one, which is why I listed it on there, because I knew I was going to be filming with it soon. Then there's the uh, four mascaras that I use the most, my Catrice Glamour Doll, which I've got on today, the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa, uh, Rimmel Wonderlux, and Maybelline Lash Sensational, which is down here. Um, and then I need to start listing my Jeffree Star lipsticks. What I'd done before, I had them all listed out in shade orders, I had all the nudes together, all the pinks together, etc. What I've done, because I've got so many now, I've split the ones that I use most are in one of the top drawers next to me here, and the ones that I use less often are in a box on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the listing so that the ones that are in the top drawer are listed first, and then the ones that are in, because then that will help me when I'm looking for a specific one to know where I've put it. Uh, the B stroke G column next to the identifier number stands for bullet or gloss. So if it is a bullet lipstick or a gloss lipstick I can indicate there. As you will see on the next page that I'm going to show you of the lipsticks. There are a lot of bullet lipsticks there. I've really been getting into bullet lipsticks recently. This is a bullet lipstick. This is the um, Sophia Nygaard bury me in lipsticks from the collaboration she did with Colourpop 
I've really, really, apart from my Jeffrey and my Gerard uh, liquid lipsticks, I've really only been wearing bullet lipsticks just recently. And this is my filming log. This is how my film log looks. So, each film has its own identifying number. Then there's the title of the film. And then I list by number the foundation, concealer, setting powder, bronzer, blush, eyeshadow and highlight, mascara and lipstick. So all the identifier numbers go across there. Let me just grab a... Let's grab one of the... Yeah, because you see, I didn't, I didn't always have the end column that you see there, which I'll talk through in just a minute. I didn't have back in 2018, but you can see, I hope, that it's listed with identifier numbers. What I did in 2018, I then had a list of the films at the back which I ticked once I'd uploaded and that was wasn't exactly sort of the easiest way of doing things unfortunately so what I decided to do was to add that column in at the end now you can see the end box is split into three different segments at the top triangle I colour in when I have edited and exported or rendered the film ready for uploading to YouTube. So it's on my hard drive and it's ready to go live. The triangle on the left is filled in when it's uploaded to YouTube, all the metadata is done, thumbnail is done, all the information in the description box is filled in, but it's not live yet. Once the film goes live, I then colour in the remaining largest triangle so I can instantly see which films are live and which ones aren't. Uh, because I do try, at the moment I haven't got any stacked up at all, but I do try and film two or three things. Like for example, I filmed this eye look today, I've also filmed or started to film the foundation review and now I'm doing this one so I'm getting three films done in one day um, obviously only one film is going to go up on one day so I'm then going to have a couple of films back up so that I like to try and have at least six backup films at any one stage so if I'm unwell or if I need to take a break because of pain levels or if I need to just go on holiday or just take some time away from social media I know that I've got at least two weeks worth of uploads I can put up so that my channel still has at least three films a week. Um, there's the indicator that I was showing that I was just talking you through as to when I colour things in. I forgot I'd done that. And there is an example, probably a little bit easier to see than me waving the book at you and getting white out flashback from the lights. Uh, so you can see that I list the description and then foundation number, concealer number, setting powder number. You can see on that top one I used three separate eyeshadows. And I list the eyeshadows at the top and then the highlight at the bottom right corner of that box mascara and lippy and you can see all of those films are all live because that was from last year's um, so I really hope that 
that will help you if you are starting a channel or if you've got a channel and you're finding it difficult to keep track of everything that you're doing this for me was the easiest way yes there's a lot of farting about at the beginning or the end of the year writing the book up drawing all the boxes in adding all the titles adding all the numbers but in terms of the time it saves you through the year in keeping track of what you have and haven't used in your collection and keeping track of when specific films are due it's invaluable it really is um, I hope you found that helpful if you if you want me to send you some of the pictures that I put up here so that you can see them in more detail then drop me a line on Instagram or Twitter and I'll quite happily send them across for you so that um, you can maybe use them as a template for doing your own but as I said every year so far I have tweaked and adjusted the order that I put things in the book because I started off with the product log first then the weekly thing and then the film listing but I actually prefer having the weekly thing at the front then the products then the films because that makes more sense so as I said I really hope that um, you found this helpful you don't have to follow my specific layouts but it will at least give you an indication of the kind of information that I log, the kind of information that I use. I mean, if you're not like me, if you haven't got a crap ton of... If you've only got like 20 palettes, then you don't necessarily need to do that because you'll know which ones you've used and which ones you haven't. If you're like me and you have way too many palettes but still get tempted to buy more, you need some way of keeping track of them all. So also doing that is really helpful because if you get pain insomnia at 3am in the morning you think I really like that but have, have I already got that one did I already buy that one particularly if I'm looking on Depop for example at palettes that I want to pick up cheaper because <clears throat> yeah money not good you know being disabled I'm on a very fixed income so I do try and pick things up lightly used from Depop or lightly used from other selling sites whenever I can. Um, <clears throat> I've been stung a couple of times with fakes but thankfully I've realised that before I put them onto my eyes. But um, it's useful because you can check back through and think, oh no, 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 I have got that. Particularly with Juvia's Place because I, I have a real mind blank on the names of the Juvia's Place palettes. And I've got a lot of them now, which is... Hmm. So it does help with that as well. It helps you stop duplicating, um, you know, buying something that you already have. Thankfully I haven't actually done that yet. <clears throat> but, you know, there's always a time. There's always a first time. It's going to happen eventually. So, uh, I think that's quite enough from me for now. Uh, the bullet journals, the dotted bullet journals I actually get from Amazon you can pick them up anywhere, it's just a case of deciding um, how big a book you want, I find that A5 is the perfect size for me um, and I really, I love owls so <laughs> hence why I've been lucky so far, I've managed to find different colours for each year um, but this particular dotted journal, you can see that when I've I've written on the front of it, when listed in 2019, mark it as red, decluttered, mark it as green, because I did go through, you can see I decluttered a load of things there, I think they went to Sophie, yeah they did, one, two, three, four, my tart, Amazonian clue. 
blushes went to her. But it's just, it's a, I, I do that anyway as a rule. If I declutter something, I will mark it as decluttered. Um, let's see if I can find one. Yeah, see there, I, I crossed... I crossed through the number and crossed through that I'd filmed it and then said who I gave it to as well just to keep track so they're like you know Revolution Forever Flawless Ice I gave to Sophie Makeup Obsession London Calling I gave to Chelsea um, I do need to do a good old declutter though <clears throat> So I will be filming a collection and declutter film very soon, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, do all those good youtuber -y things, give me a like, give me a comment, let me know, do you bullet journal? What do you do on yours? What things do you do? Do you like bullet journal your gardening, for example, as to what, what you plant when and um, you know which vegetables to plant when and when you can harvest them? Let me know, I'd be really interested to find out. As I said, contact me on either Twitter or Instagram if you want me to send you pictures of those pages. Right, I think I am now starting to blither far too much because the pain levels have gone ridiculously high. So it's time for me to say, as ever, you'll stay fabulous, my darlings. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.